What's up, family? Out here at this park, taking my walk. Um, there's something that's been on my mind lately, and I wanted to run it by y'all and just see what y'all thought. Uh, I, w I made a video, a little funny sketch, about um, pretty much how within the black community, you're kind of put down if you're educated or you're, you're considered not as black. And I made a, a funny little sketch about, you know, a black man transitioning into a white man. Go check it out if you haven't. But what I want to talk about in this video in particular dives deeper into transracialism because I think that's the, the direction we're headed. You know, you can already switch your gender. But I want to talk more about transracial, uh, transracial, a transracial future today and just get some feedback because Ooh, thought I was getting attacked. <laughs> All right. Ooh, I was ready. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Just get some feedback because when I was thinking of this, it, it, it jumped out at me, right? Follow my logic, right? If transgenderism is about a person, say a man, wanting to be a woman, he is doing things to make himself now appear as a woman. He's wearing a wig. He's wearing a dress. He's shaving his beard off and taking hormones so that he grows breasts, right? He's doing things to make himself appear as a woman. And many people are saying, you're still not a woman. You're still a man, right? So recognizing that. Well, transracialism, you know, being transracial is the same thing along those lines. You're, you're a certain race, right? You're a black woman. And I wanna talk about black women today. You're a black woman, you're a black woman. And you are doing things actively to present yourself as a white woman. The woman that you are calling a Karen, the woman that you are calling uh, all of these different things, right? The woman that you claim is taking the black men away from the community, you are presenting yourself as her, right? And we all know it, we see it. Black women spend almost $2 billion a year on their hair right and it's not on there they're not spending that money mainly to look like black women they're spending much of that money to look like a white woman let's be real so how how is it that many of these black women i see online are talking about you know we need to stop teaching our children about being transgender we need to we need to stop teaching that in school or or you know black pride black power but yet you are going to a, a store a beauty supply store you're looking in the aisles you're looking at the price tags you're saying that hair that is synthetic horse hair or maybe it's a person's hair that's not my hair, but I'm going to purchase this for the purpose of appearing like a European a woman, like a white woman, right? That's transracialism. That is, that is being true. You are trying to present yourself as a different race. Although we still see your black skin, we understand that when you put that weave on, when you braid your hair up and put that stocking cap on and then put that wig on and, even, and, and then take a step further, you dye that, that wig blonde, right? There's really no other group of people, no other group of women in particular that does that at the level that black women do. So I believe that black women are opening the door for transracialism in a big way because they 
maybe they don't see it this way, but they are presenting themselves as white women and it's going to normalize, and I believe that when we start moving into more of a society where people are accepting of transracialism, where you know someone from one race can identify as someone from another race and things like that, I believe that black women are going to be used as an example and a tool to normalize it. Because for decades, black women have been presenting themselves as European, right? And, and it's scary. It's scary because if you have a daughter, right? If you're a black person and you have a daughter, it's a conversation that you have to have with your daughter. But there's so much pressure on little black girls to present themselves as, as white girls, as Europeans, right? We've normalized it. But I guarantee you, if there was a white family and they had a daughter who was white. They're not having conversations and they're not telling their daughter to present herself as a black woman, as a black girl, right? There's zero families out there who there's a white daughter and they're going out buying black hair products. They're going out buying a wig that has cornrows on it or, or dreadlocks or twist or an afro, they're not doing that. And if, if, if a white girl went to school with a wig on that had cornrows on it, it would be considered racist. Think about that for a second. It's perfectly normal for black women to put on a wig that makes them look like they have white woman hair. And it, that's normal. But if a, if a white woman put on a wig that made it look like they had cornrows or twist, she would be considered racist. She would be considered culturally appropriating. Well, if, if a white woman is considered culturally appropriating for putting on a wig that has cornrows, or let's, let's even stay, take it a step back. There are, you can actually braid many white women's hair, you know, it's long enough. I've seen it where, I think it was like Kim Kardashian or Khloe Kardashian, one of the Kardashians, I think, they had braided hair, right? They're not black, but they, they braided their hair and they were called out for culturally appropriating because their hair was braided. And that is typically a black hairstyle, right? So you can be a white woman and braid and have your own hair braided. You're not going to the store and buying something else, buying someone else's hair. You can braid your own hair and be considered racist, uh, be consi or get called out for cultural appropriation. But it's totally normal, totally normal for a black woman to show up with someone else's hair on her head, dyed a different color that is not naturally her color, that is obviously trying to replicate duplicate what a European white woman's hair's, uh, hair looks like, that is completely cool. That is completely normal. It, it, it seems like black women are the only woman, or the only women that are allowed to get away with it. That brings me into why. Why are black women the only group of women that it is socially acceptable for them to culturally appropriate someone else's look. Why are black women the only group of women where it is acceptable for them to, to uh, portray themselves as another woman, right? That, that's transracialism to me. You're portraying yourself as another woman, right? Another, a, a woman of, from another race. Any other woman get in trouble, racist, not cool can't do it but it's 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 a staple in the black community as a matter of fact as a matter of fact anytime there's some big interview or big life event or uh there's something that's happening in your life that you need to get all dressed up for as a as a black woman the first thing they turn to is the weave 
The first thing they turn to is the wig that makes it look like their hair is straight. That ain't your hair. You, you know you're not straightening your hair. You, you, you know that. But that's the first thing that you turn to. Why is that? Well, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Not going to shy away from it. Good morning. Not going to talk away. Not going to shy away from it. So there's, there's ample research out there that shows the reason why black women wear weaves and wigs and spend so much money on their hair is because they have an inferiority complex. And I know that there are a lot of black women that are going to say, no, I just need to wear this hair because if I wear my natural hair, I'm not going to get that job. I'm not going to get that raise. I'm not seen as professional. So I have to, I have to do that, right? It's, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. This is the same excuse they use for the gender wage gap when they say, well, no, I can't negotiate for my salary because if I negotiate, I'm going to be seen as a bitch. I'm going to be seen as, you know, a, a, a masculine female. And, and it's all these excuses, right? It's all these excuses on why they can't just be themselves. But my question to you is, have you ever tried? Have you ever tried to go to interviews, multiple interviews over a length of time with your natural hair? Probably not. Have you ever tried to just show up as you are and people accept you? Probably not because it's that wig, that weave is like a drug. You take a hit and all your problems go away. But deep down inside, you know that's not really you. You know that you don't really look like this. You know that when people are calling you beautiful and things like that and queen, that this is an artificial look and that this isn't really what you look like. You know this. But we're expected to pretend, especially black men. We're supposed to pretend that that's really your hair. That's really what you look like, right? That's, that's really what you look like. But in any other situation, it would be considered racist. It would be considered fake. It would be considered transracialism. It would be considered cultural appropriation. So why do black women get away with it? Black women get away with this because it's understood within America that when black people do stuff to themselves, it is acceptable, right? Here's the thing. No one is forcing black people, black women, to wear these wigs. Black women are taking it upon themselves to wear these, these wigs, these weaves, and present themselves in this way. Now, it's an industry, right? There is, there is an, a whole global industry that I believe is going to be, uh, you know, around 2026, I think it's forecasted to be about a $27 billion industry, the black hair product industry, the black hair care industry, right? So it, there's a whole industry driving this insecurity, driving this inferiority complex. You think they're just going to lay down and say, hey, get better. You know what? When, when you have an industry that is dependent upon you thinking of yourself as less than white women, they're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep doing it because they make more money. The more insecure you feel, the more money that they're making. And so this is one of the reasons why the messaging towards black women, women is the way that it is, why it's acceptable, because this industry is likely in the dark fighting for for messaging to remain fighting for there to be certain standards of okay if you're on tv if you're in commercials if you're doing this if you're doing that you need to rock that straight hair everyone knows it's not yours but go ahead and do it right so i'm just gonna say this if you're if you are a black woman and you're rocking a wig or weave that makes it look like you have straight hair that makes it look like you are a European woman, I can't take you seriously in terms of you talking about progress within the black community, you talking about your further culture, you talking about, you know, as a, if you're raising daughters, um, I can't take you as seriously as somebody that's rocking natural hair. 
or you know I, I could I could see I could see you using the weave for braid ins. That's it. Where you're you're just using it for your braids and it makes your braids longer. Okay, I'll get that. But if you're using it to actively look like a white woman, to actively look like you just have straight hair, I can't take you seriously. Because you wouldn't take black women, you wouldn't take black men seriously if we were walking around with a, a damn toupee that made it look like we were white men. You would not take us seriously. If we showed up with a toupee that had a straight hair and some bangs on, in, on the forehead, you would not take us seriously, right? As a matter of fact, many black women, and this is what I've heard all grown up and, and experienced, many black uh, women don't even take educated black men seriously, right? Like they, they wanna go for the thug, they wanna go for the gangster, they wanna go for the gang member. They want to go for the bad boy, right? So you won't even take black educated men who are not criminals seriously. But you want us to take you seriously when you are portraying yourself as a European woman. And I know that I'm going to get a lot of pushback for this video. I know a lot of black women are going to say, well, we only do this because uh, black men want black uh, white women and all this other stuff. That's a cap. That's cap. Because if you go online and you talk to black women, they're not focused on getting a black man. They're not even focused on getting a man. Black women are least likely to be married. They're not focused on getting a man. They're focused on them. So you're going to be hard pressed. You're gonna, it's going to be hard for you to convince me that black women are only wearing weave or that a, a big reason why they're wearing weave and wigs and stuff like that is to attract black men. Because if you would go that far to attract black men, because white men don't really, you know, they're, they, they're not really interested in that. Uh, <laughs> if you would go that far to attract black men, why is it that there's such a high single mother rate? Like if you're willing to be insecure and present yourself as a, a white woman who was a part of the group of people who enslaved you and oppressed you for hundreds of years, like you're always saying, why would you, why, why aren't you married more to us? Why does it seem like the relationship dynamic is getting worse? Why do I always say, uh, hear women saying, you know, I don't need no man, I can do it all by myself and all this other stuff, if, if that's the real reason why you're, you're rocking the weave or you're rocking the wig, right? It, I just don't believe it. To, to kind of put a bow and tie on this, final thoughts, okay? I think that black women are going to be used to introduce transracial, uh, to normalize transracialism. I think that um, the reason why black women appropriate white woman imagery and, and, and portray themselves as white women, women is because they're too insecure to just rock their natural hair and be comfortable and love themselves in their own skin with their own hair. And they've made excuses and made things up in terms of them not being able to get a job or them not being able to walk through life without being made fun of, all these things. Uh, I think that it's an excuse. Do I feel some level of empathy? I do on some level because I understand what it's like to walk through life and, and really believe that there's something about you natural that's going to hold you back. But the thing is, is that that's part of life is fighting against those things, not giving in, coming to love yourself. And I've come to love myself. And you see, I rock dreadlocks. It, they haven't held me back. They haven't held me back from anything. So, <clears throat> you know, take that leap of faith. If you're a black woman, I'll leave it on a positive note. If you're a black woman and you're saying, you know what, I'm tired of looking like a white woman. I'm tired of putting this wig on. I'm tired of putting this weave on, uh, weave in. I'm tired of being something I'm not. Because you know, you know, you know that's not your hair. You know that's not how you really look. You know that you know that you're appropriating the look of 
a white woman who you call Karen, who you, you know, make it seem like you're not inferior to, but you're doing everything to look like, you know that you don't really want to live like this and that you you just want to wake up and be able to get out your bed and go outside and have your natural hair showing. You probably want these things. So if you actually want those things, it's going to take some time because there's a lot of psychological undertones there. There's a lot of psychological damage there. So just be kind to yourself. Take baby steps. Um, try to find support groups and, and take a leap of faith and just rock your natural hairstyle. And all the things that you probably thought would happen will likely never happen. You'll probably still be able to have a job. You'll, 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 you know, like, you, you can still get relationships. Just be your authentic self. It's, it's you know, it's 2023. Cat's out the bag. We all know that that's not what you look like. We know that's not your hair. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that black men don't want this. There's no black man that I've ever spoken to in my life that was like, yeah, I would not date a black woman if she doesn't have a weave in her hair. I don't see it. You know, I don't see it. Black men want you to have natural hair. We want you to love yourselves. We want you to, to uh, be comfortable portraying a strong sense of black femininity for our daughters. We want those things. What we don't want is to have daughters that are walking around trying to look like white girls and white women. We don't want that. You don't want that. So respectfully, make a change. I think the future of the black community, a large part of it depends on this because it's a total contradiction for us to talk about black power and black progress when half of us, you know, which would be the women, many of you are still portraying the image of a white woman. So those are my final thoughts. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know any content you want me to cover. I'm out.